we can get started then. Uh, we'll call the uh, December 6th regular select board meeting to order. We're uh, waiting. Brad Town should be here shortly. John Quinn won't be available, but we do have uh, Flo Smith and Dave Sawyer with us virtually. Um, for additions and changes to the agenda, we have a Washington County Union Supervisory District ballot discussion uh, and decision on letter. Jonathan Goddard should be here. Okay. Um, and number two, Highway Department truck RFP discussion. So do we have Jonathan Goddard's not here? What do you know about the, uh, the letter events? Uh, what I know is it's been sent out to all five board members, counties, for the union school district. And it's in regards to all five towns have to agree to mail ballots. Um, and, the, and the school is requesting that in this letter. Gotcha. I'm sorry, I went back up. I, had, I forgot a public comment. Is there any public comment? Here we go. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm not sure if I was on the, the call with the microphone open. My name is Kathleen. And um, it's, it's okay to make a quick public comment. This is from Kathleen, by the way. She uh, sent this in for, for the board members. Copies of anybody's, anybody's interested. Sure. I'm sure the gentleman in the back is in order. So um, just I wanted to mention the um, item that the handout that I sent, if I were there in person, I would have been happier to see all of your faces, whether even if it was on, you know, a video, but um, I live in Berlin and I'm intimidated by politics in general. But now that we find ourselves here, I just wanted to give some of what I've um gathered for the last year of information in regards to these um, products that we've been using. We've been using the masks and um, the injections and the testing. All three items are emergency use authorized items. And the, there's two sections there that show you the governing uh, requirements from the FDA, the federal law for these products. And Without going into it too much, if you just read the highlighted items, you'll see for healthcare providers and those who've taken any of these products to use for medical reasons in the last 20 months, there's always the right to refuse. And to go into it further is another day's task. I just wanted you to see that for yourself. And also, as you consider um, the, the most uh, effective way to keep each other safe, um, vaccinated and unvaccinated people to look at all these therapeutics that are actually available um, and very affordable. So um, that was just the other section there. Okay. So it's just, it's uh, the information to be given to anyone to be able to, and I can give you reference points. I wanted to make it simpler, not a lot of, you know, um, citations it was hard for me to actually get the graphics together believe it or not but um i just wanted to put it on the record that these are guidelines that are supposed to be followed and that you can empower yourselves now that we're at this very local level of decision making we can empower ourselves with the guidelines themselves and i could go further i just know i have to keep it simple we have very little time um to to share some of this stuff right now Okay. Can I ask a question? Is sure. she for or against masks? I can't tell from what she's just said. I am saying that masks are not um, effective medically, that they do not do what they've been purported to do. As we've, as we've addressed uh, this very complicated, media-saturated information that we've received, um, and that masks are not... Your, your nasal passages themselves will produce hydrogen peroxide that will do its job when you breathe air in your nostrils. Like there's, you know, I can give you the citations and the medical information to show you that. That is more effective than a mask on your face. I mean, um, 
Yeah, no, I'm absolutely, this is, this is the way we should be handling a problem such as COVID. We should be looking at the therapeutics that have always been there and not thinking that a mask will protect you just as it wouldn't protect someone in a bioweapons lab. Um, it might keep your spit from going into the open cavity in a surgical procedure, and that's important, but it won't stop a bioweapon from being passed amongst one another. So it just, it just doesn't. Okay. Anything else? I appreciate you sharing. No, I, thank you. I, I just wish I, I, you know, this, this, this 20 months has made us realize there are a lot of decision makers at your level that I, I never got to meet, but um, I just felt like I needed to make a quick, quick statement at least. And, um, and I, who am I talking to right now? Justin Lawrence. And Justin. everybody else in the room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Just to, just to make sure that I could at least, you know, say hi to you later and know who I said hi to for a moment. But, um, and then everybody else is like nine or 10 people, I guess. But, um, yeah, I, I think that covers it, you know, what's on that paper. And anybody who wants to reach out to me later, please do. Um, I, look forward to being able to share more later. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, any other public comment? All right. Guess we'll get back to the, okay. that ballot discussion. I mean, we didn't really talk much about right. it. So the, the letters in, in the package there, uh, an outline of, of what the uh, board has uh, sent out to all the five town participants about the flat boards. Um, asking for a motion for each of the boards to approve, which they need to have in order to be able to mail out the school ballots this year. And didn't we mail out our ballots in good that last year? Does anybody remember? We did. I think we did. What I, what I can say just for a little bit of background information, I know Rosemary has talked to Middlesex uh, Town Clerk, and they are not in favor. And, uh, yeah, and why? I don't know why. Um, I, did, I didn't ask why they were not in favor. Uh, and Rosemary is not uh, a big fan of it either. She's not in favor of mailing ballots as well. So we did it last year. We did it last minute, I remember, last year as well. Um, for it last year. So why wouldn't why wouldn't they? I'm just curious, like why they're going to do the town? They need our permission to mail. Apparently, um, the only thing with that is, is that anybody who wants to get a a, a mail in ballot, all they got to do is call the town clerk. Right. I don't see. I don't see uh, putting out the expense of mailing out to everybody. The statute changed this year. Last year, they did not have to have all town degree. And last year, we weren't doing um, any in-person meetings. And so I think it was just kind of a scurry make it happen. Okay. I'm not a proponent of mailing to all. Right. Um, because as Brad just said, not only can people call and request a ballot, they can email, they can stop by. And they do. And we... This isn't the reason I'm not a proponent of it, but it's worth noting, it's not like you're suddenly going to see everybody vote just because they were sent to ballot. And so personally, my feeling is that if you're going to take the time to vote, you ought to have a little skin in the game. And that if you really want to vote and you really um, are have some knowledge on any of the topics being voted on that you should be able to make a phone call or send an email or drop by in order to do so. It takes yeah. an awful lot of time to stuff all those out by the way. Not just the cost of the post, it's Later. a lot of personnel time to do it. Yep. So the towns have to do it, not the supervisory union? It would be the towns having it as part of the statute. Anything else on that? We're looking for a motion. Motion to approve. I'm doing that. I'm good. That's what I figured. Oh, 
I guess well, since we don't need a motion, we'll just move on. Does Flo want to make a motion? Okay. Okay. Yes. Friends, it says that we don't feel the need to make a motion on that. And uh, with my okay. Next on the agenda, we have the highway department uh, truck RFP. Yeah, so real quick on that one. Um, it was about a seven hundred dollar difference, seven to eight hundred dollar difference in the in the proposals that we had um, from Charlie Boyce and uh, Allegiance, which was formerly Clark's. Um, my recommendation, I think Tim's recommendation, is for, to be going with the lower bid, which is Clark's, because in addition to that, Clark's was able to give us a firm commitment on when they could deliver the product, where uh, Charlie Boyce does not have a guarantee of when they're going to have their product yet their truck. That, that was a big uh, difference as well. They couldn't give a delivery date where uh, Clark's has one reserved right now. They're down to two left of like what they have reserved for us with a date. Allegiance, they bought out Clark and j &B. So they're at almost 40 years of complaint with now. So chances are their inventory would be better. Maybe next year. I mean, not I mean, not for trucks, but for uh, car. Yeah. They get them. Yes, yeah, so they get a bigger pool to pick out of. Yeah. Um, parts and stuff now. More of an open. Um, so, like Vince was saying, yeah, we went. I think it was two months ago that we came and talked about the this part and everything else. So we went and did it. Um, reached out to Sheldon Trucks, Clark's Alliance, and Charlie Boys. And um, Sheldon's are pretty much booked till 2024. Um, Clark's themselves took it upon themselves. So international only is going to build so many trucks for Duke for 2022. And so is it what they all are. And, Freightliner's doing the same thing. When I talked to them when we started this, they had min Freightliner had minimum uh, openings left. And Clark's had none, but they put nine trucks in their own name. You know, they kind of know who's coming up for placements. Uh, they had one um, that we could get our name on. So going through the process and this is the uh, end result. So by signing right signing that commitment letter, it guarantees us a chassis and then um, what it does is it's written in there that if for some reason it doesn't pass through town meeting, we are not held um, to buy the truck. And this will be coming out of our budget anyway, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, so if our budget doesn't pass, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's true. Yeah, and this truck was scheduled too, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's on our, and the 223-128 was what we, was that the number we were at before? What was it? Yep. 223-128 is the, uh, is the quote from Allegiance Clarks. How much is it to put the body in the that's, that's, all the, all the that's, that's, that's delivered to That's delivered to you. More than seven. Right, and we're out of work. Yeah, and that doesn't take into three, account any trade in value as well. Was that less any trade in value? Yes, and then whatever we get from the truck. Uh, move to uh, have the chair signed for the truck. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Not bad prayers will thank you. Not <laughs> so All right. All right. Uh, Rick DeAngelis, Good Samaritan Haven. Yeah, I believe Mr. DeAngelis is on online with us now. Uh, good evening. Hi. Uh, sorry, I'm not. I didn't make the effort to come to your meeting tonight. That's, uh, I think, one consequence of uh, COVID is I've gotten lazier about going out in the evening. 
But um, uh, I, I want to introduce also uh, Carl Hilton Van Ostal, who's uh, he's on the screen now somewhere. And uh, Carl is uh, one of the officers of our board of directors. And I, I wanted him to be here tonight and to also show you that it's not just Rick DeAngelis that represents Good Samaritan Haven. There's a whole team of us that are involved. So um, yeah, um, I, so I'm sorry I didn't get back to you sooner regarding your proposal uh, with, for an agreement with Good Sam for the Twin City property. Uh, I needed the time to really carefully review it and, uh, and consult with our board of directors and our attorney. And um, so our, our response to that is that, you know, it is our intention, intention to pay our full property taxes as long as we possibly can. However, we're just not able to sign an agreement which would permanently eliminate our right for a full or a partial exemption. You know, this is something that we're eligible for under state law as a charity. Uh, as we see it, if we if we did that, that would be at cross purposes with our our charitable purposes. But I would like to offer you something in response, and that is that we'd like to suggest that we meet with you annually to report on the project and discuss any excessive impacts on town services, and also discuss our ability to pay the taxes in the coming year. And uh, this is one way that we can, you know, keep this at the forefront and be open and transparent with you about your legitimate interest in how we do with, with that property. Well, Rick, I think, I think the, what sparked this letter was the comments that were made through the process when you were meeting with the board. Um, and so I actually asked for this letter to be drafted. The reason I asked for it was in the, the entire time that you were talking with the board, uh, you, you told us that you had no, you would not be asking for any tax reduction of any kind and that you were going to, you were going to do that. And, you know, basically that you're just going to be a great partner for the town. And I have no doubts that you're going to be a good partner with the town. I just, I could see that maybe there would be some reluctance to sign the letter. And I was curious, curious why that would be. Um, simply because through our entire conversation and, and discussions with the board, that's, that's what you told us you would be doing. Um, so it's not necessarily, you're, you don't want to, you're not willing to sign anything minor that says you guys will follow through with what you said publicly. Well, I, 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 I believe that I said that we, we would pay property taxes I never said that I would sign away our right to to apply for an exemption if we needed one. I, we never. I, I don't recall discussing that um, in any of the meetings. So, like no, I said, I mean, we never, I did, we never had a discussion about actually signing this. But I figured, based on what you were saying in the meeting, that this wouldn't be an issue. So I wanted to. I thought I knew what was right by the town. So, what are you proposing that? every year we get together is there some way we can document that make sure that happens because what i'm concerned about is as time goes on this thing may fall to the background and, and it might not be in the forefront maybe there's a change in the board maybe you're not there anymore i want to make sure that we both are good partners for each other and that we can make sure that we're, we're doing the best by our community i i uh, justin i totally get it and um and you have a legitimate interest the town has an interest and uh, I, I'm willing to, well, I, I want to see what the proposal is, but I am offering to meet with you annually about this time of year. And uh, you deserve to know how the project is doing. And, uh, and it's, I think it's a worthwhile thing to talk about. Is there an impact on your services that's excessive? And finally, I, I'm willing to discuss that as well every year, uh, our ability to pay the taxes. And it is our intention We've already started to pay the taxes this year, and uh, I'm quite confident that we can do it next year as well, but I'm just not comfortable with permanently signing away that right. Oh, it's Brad. <clears throat> no, um, I mean, even if he signs it, the state statute, yeah, so, <laughs> yep. 
have something. Okay. To fulfill that. Yeah, yeah. Vince. I mean, those for both parties to look at. Yeah. <laughs> Vince, Vince will draft something up for both of us to look at. I just want to make sure it's something we have that we're, we're constantly, we're on top of once a year, and I would appreciate your participation in that. Yeah, okay, sure thing. Is, that Carl? This is Carl. I could speak on behalf of the board. I'm currently the vice chair of the board and uh, in line to be the chair of the board of the Good Samaritan Haven um, in about a year's time. And we can certainly put something on our annual uh, schedule as a board where uh, we would have whether it's an executive director or a uh, member of the board, uh, come and speak with the, with the select board. Anything, anything else you gentlemen would like to share? Uh, I, I don't have anything else. I don't either. Get that right out of the way. Yeah, Thank you good. both. All right. Point Ridge uh, Road Curb Cut Permit. Joel and Michelle Baker. Joel here. That's what I thought. <laughs> so there's a, there's a letter in your package from Mr. Provost as well, discussing some of the details around this. Um, I've talked to Tom also a little bit about this. One of the things that uh, well, that is a recommendation, basically, for an engineering design to be done for this entrance um, that they want to just lot. There's there's just a lot going on there. Um, the Tim's been down to take a look at it as well. Um, that wasn't by the design that you were. Oh, that, that, that's correct. It was not. But that was a, a neighbor. So it's, yeah, it's well, let's let's. Idea. Let Vince finish up and then give me a moment there. Yeah. So that was, again, Tim's been down to look at it as well. And there's just, there's a lot going on there. Um, there's some feedback from you know, other members of the neighborhood. That, like I said, the letters are in the package there. I think to just the recommendation is to, to, get, to make it happen and move it forward in the best way for everyone. And Tim, I'll speak about what you saw down there from everything affecting that, that entrance as well. That, um, there's a lot to be taken into consideration um, for that entrance. Not that it can't be done, it can be, um, but there's, there's water issues, there's uh, other lines through there as well. Uh, Tim, you wanna talk about what you saw at the site? So yeah, I, I went down and visited there last week. I went and stopped, look. Um, we got at least three different services between there's a there's a sewer manhole directly in the middle I'm, i believe to your entrance um not sure why that would have been placed there if that was a right away if that's here saying there but so there's a sewer manhole right there there's a water shut off um there's a culvert that crosses point ridge um so there's storm water runoff there also. And there's a ditch that runs directly down the side there. And I'm sure at one point it was probably straight. And since over the years, it's kind of meandered its way through people's other properties. And um, so when we talked about it, they kind of thought that getting a, an engineered design to kind of, I don't know, help. I think it would help you be able to get your access easier and faster and then have everybody held account responsible. Like somebody can't tell you no because they don't want water being turned onto their property. It's your right away. It's, it's not actually right away, it's, it's the property. Yeah, it's a property, yes. If you look at the pictures. Yep. The manhole is right there, culvert crosses, and then this stream runs down through here and kind of turns now and goes out into here. Um, 
So I don't really know outside of that right away. You know, you know, all those changes and no, and like I said, outside of that right away, I'm not sure. I mean, we don't have any jurisdiction, jurisdiction right. on what happens up there. It's just, it's just what will happen in our right away. Yeah. It's, it's just these super issues. Well, they're going to have to pave around or at least the manhole riser is going to be added into that driveway. And if it, I don't know if you have any intentions on paving a driveway at some point or if it's just going to be a gravel driveway. But I don't want to out. My immediate interest is to put it on the market and sell it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to have a curb cut as part of that. Yeah. Water line actually the access is, for my lot. Is that the, yeah. the curb so stop that's, that's the curb out there is, is for your lot? That's what that is. So, that so there, there, that'll, you know, I mean, that would disappear. It would either be short or whatever. Um, once they add it on, anticipation of you building. Cool. Yeah. Um, and the, the sewer manhole that you're talking about, that's in the street. No, it's on the other side. It's in that grass area that they're mowing um, over the pavement curb. It probably wrong. shouldn't be there. I would say three feet. I think there's another sewer manhole further downstream, actually on our lot. We probably use. It might be. I'm not sure where the lines run down there. It could be that the line runs out that way. Maybe it might turn and run behind the residence. I think we would hear a lot and not try to tie into an uphill. Yeah, it's just the the concern with Tom sees the utilities um, was the town's accessibility to the manhole after the driveway was put in, like so the dirt. You know, there's always going to be a manhole in the driveway, so if anything, like. We've done it before. Is maybe you might might be a stipulation that you pave ten feet off the road to pave in the manhole, so it wasn't it doesn't erode with gravel or anything. The manhole is always just going to be flush with the pavement type deal. So they, if they have to access it, they just pop the cover off, to get into it. Yeah, you know what I mean, and, um, Think that stipulation be good enough for the manhole? Uh, yeah, I think if it had an apron on it, that would yeah. that would alleviate the the uh, catch uh, the manhole. And if the water shut off his his curb stop, then yeah. that's going to get all tied into uh, taking care of and the. And like I said, I'm not sure exactly where the property lines run. The biggest concern for our end of it is that that ditch where the water drains away from, because water runs down, if you're looking up the road, the water comes down the right hand side of the road and then crosses just below his property. Where this is the culvert right here, and that's the ditch that runs down yep. through. So and what's the what's the slope here? Is it all? Is it just? Straight? It's pretty gradual till you get back there, and then it's you know it drops off. Well, it's it goes uphill where the soft woods are in that picture. Gotcha. But you know, I mean, that's way out of our yep. right away. Our just biggest concern is is we don't know if that drainage ditch. So followed up somehow. Well, I mean, right now the drainage ditch is on this property owner's land, right? Yeah, it turns. It, I think it's washed out a little bit. It turns when you get closer down there. You're right in here. Yeah, you can kind of see where it comes back. It's hard because the grass is all three feet high down there. It turns right here and kind of comes back into where. So the worst you have to do is put a culvert in there. But again, that's not that's out of our. Yeah, it's out of our. Well, we've got. I mean, the, the DRB has approved the curb cut, right? We just start approving working in the right of way at yeah. this point in time. So I would assume that anything that needed to be done should have been addressed in that process for, for issues like that. 
we didn't approve it. We recommended it. We can't approve it. Just wow. Approve it. Right. Okay. <laughs> well. Thank you. <laughs> Um, they recommend it. <laughs> well, I mean, we can still approve it with stipulations. Right. Yeah. So, like I said, as, as far that? as my concern is, it, it, it's it's good where it is. You know what I mean? There's plenty of site visibility, everything else. Um, the only maybe stipulation is, is um, the to pay the apron to um, around that manhole. And I'm not sure. Like I said, if you said that you think there's another one down in your lot a little bit farther. I believe there is. I think there's a sewer line that runs through that property that services the whole neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. My my guessing is is probably the one that runs along the street, picks up everything on the right hand side, and then there's probably a line on your house or over on your your side of the houses where they run into. I think because some of them houses are Lower than the street versus somewhere higher than the street. So there's probably a line, probably a line that comes out of that goes down and behind those residents below your house. So, so right, there's a, there's a, there's yeah. So, you know, just the fact of having an apron so that manhole can't be you know, eroded or disturbed. Because the big thing is, is if it's just dirt, you know, you sell it's a lot, it's a dirt. And it gets eroded, and somebody goes in there with a plow and catches a manhole, and pops a manhole off in the middle of a snowstorm. The sewer department's going to have to try to remedy that problem. I want to be first to green paving. Short apron, yeah. Short apron. I'm a driveway construction. Yeah, that works for me. Everything else is all down, is, isn't in our purvey anyway. No, everything goes downhill from there. Move to approve the permit for the curb cut for Mr. Baker with the stipulation that he uh, puts in a uh, apron around the manhole. Any size on the apron? Sec around the manhole. Second. Second. Um, I would say up to the town right away. What's that, about 10 feet off the road? Do you remember what it was then? We, we just did some of the stuff that I, mean, I don't remember. 50 foot from. Well, that's the Calder sack. I don't, is that the. So no, that was a Calder sack. I didn't know if that was the. Uh, let's let's just say put a uh, uh, five foot apron around the uh, manhole. Manhole. Can I get a second? Second it. <laughs> All right. Any Mr. discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to comment if I may. Yep, go ahead. I'm David Provost. I'm the president of the Partridge Farms Area Association. And uh, I did send you a letter that we had sent to the uh, Development Review Board earlier about uh, the concerns with the property and development of, of that property. Um, as we said before, and when I sent that by email, we have no objection per se to the curb cut. Uh, that is the only access to uh, Mr. Baker's property, that is his property. So we're, we're, we, we can't object to, we can't make it impossible for him to gain access to his property. But uh, we do have um, guidelines for development of the property and, and we're going to be uh, very concerned about uh, the impact on both the, the two neighbors there uh, and on the drainage and sewer systems and the wetlands that we believe are in that property. Um, and by the way, our, our uh, Guidelines do require a paved driveway anyhow, so so that will be part of the things that we'll be looking at should uh, anybody choose to develop that property. Um, but otherwise, our, our concerns are laid out in that letter, and um, we will also be uh, approaching the uh, state DEC to have a wetlands assessment, um, and that will be independent. So, Okay. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Otter Creek and contact on Fisher Road, Culver. Okay. 
of the board's information. Water Creek did provide its uh, in your folder uh, timeline of events as well. That was talked about. Yeah, some of the some of the questions we had at our last meeting um, were it was just how how I know that there was a miscalculation based on a, a, a for example. It was uh, I'm not sure the miscalculation, wow. but there we, yes, there was a, a design was done based on a understood uh, bearing values. Yeah, I think is what you're referring to. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and. I think the board was seeking some clarification on how that happened and, and some additional information because we're incurring an expense that we didn't originally anticipate, obviously. Sure. My name is Glenn Roby. I'm with Contact. Okay, Glenn, nice to meet you. I'm Justin. And I'm Craig Jewell with Otter Creek Engineering in, uh, in place of Robert Clark, who's on vacation. Mm -hmm. Did you want to run through timeline or some other explanation, or did you want me to? Sure. Well, I, I at first, I guess I wanted to just make sure to see if anybody, if, you, if the board had the opportunity to review the timeline and had any specific questions within the timeline. Wait, I haven't had time. That's fine. I just wanted to make sure before we get started. Um, I am not the project manager for the project. Uh, Robert Clark is, but he's on vacation, so he asked me to um, come, in, come in his stead. And part of the reason for this synopsis was for the board, but for my own edification of kind of how, how we got to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, my general understanding of how we got here was the town's overarching goal and need to have the road open with a uh, final solution to the problem uh, by the end of the calendar year. Um, with that in mind, the recommendation was to split the project essentially into two separate contracts where the town would direct purchase the structure from contact um, while also simultaneously going out to bids to do the earthwork portion, hiring the boys to actually install the structure. Um, due to the schedule, um, the project proceeded um, during a concept with conceptual uh, phase information and during the process, it was identified that the wrong bearing capacity was used to size the footing associated with this. Um, this would have, had it been caught initially, this would have been an included project cost um, that all bidders would have bid on. Um, unfortunately, due to the accelerated timelines associated with the projects and the need and the want to get the project done on time, um, these are some of the risks that are involved with this. Um, luckily, uh, for all parties involved, this was caught before it was constructed. So there was no rework that needed to be done, but there was uh, a change to the size of the footing that was necessary uh, to make sure that the design was compliant with the underlying soils um, and so that the structure was uh, constructed properly. Um, that initial cost, I believe, was somewhere in the neighborhood of $46,000. Um, we negotiated out uh, with the boys to provide that service on an hourly contract rather than a, on a lump sum amount. Um, I believe the total came to uh, just over $36,000 um, related to that project. So um, I fully understand the town's concern with incurring additional costs that they weren't anticipating. Um, I would note that the cost was always there. It just wasn't known at the time of bidding. Um, and I think the only loss that the town suffered was not having that be part of a competitive bid, bidded portion of a project rather than having a contractor who was already um, under contract and thus was the sole person who could uh, provide an estimate um, for that service. Um, I will note that it, it appears that that money uh, is within the 5% contingency recommended by Otter Creek um, when the bids were opened. Um, industry standard uh, for construction projects, especially with federally funded projects, which I know this one is not, 5% um, contingency is industry standard to carry uh, related overall project costs. Um, so that's my general understanding of how we got to here. And I guess I'm here tonight just to answer any four questions or any other questions um, related to the circumstances. Are there any other things that you can foresee coming up that'll eat into the 5% contingency? 
Um, my general understanding is that there may be some additional construction related costs for resident work. Uh, I, I believe that the project is not fully complete is my understanding at this point where the, the road is open, but there is still some uh, putting water in right now. Oh, are they okay? So I a water line and another utility, I believe, need to go over the structure. I was by the site today uh, just to jump in, and they were working on that water line. I believe they had uh, three days of utility work based on a call I had with the boys on Friday. So by Wednesday, I believe that was going to be completed, and, but they are back filled up over the structure. So, and, and so my understanding is, is from a construction Du Bois contract cost, no, there is no more anticipated additional costs associated with that. Whether or not there are additional um, services from Otter Creek, uh, I will leave that to Robert when he returns and he can discuss that with the board. I don't believe there are of any significance that I am aware of, but I won't speak to that because I don't have um, full knowledge of where we are with construction related to that or the budgets associated with our contracts with the town. And so contact, you, you, you I'm just trying to simplify this. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, cause I know. Um, so you guys had built, design your span based on the footings that Otter Creek and then based the, it's a collaborative effort. Uh, explain that to me a little bit. Can sure. You? So at various iterations, different um, present complete plans and survey information is provided. They provide criteria such as waterway opening, uh, grades, fill heights, and all these go into selecting a structure that's most appropriate for the site. So we went through that uh, process with them, staying at a preliminary level until we get to the point where you folks have already committed to the structure itself and the bids have been received for the earthwork and uh, obviously there was uh, something that was unforeseen there uh, post bid and i'll also say that we went through some uh, fairly herculean efforts as far as supporting both the town as well as the schedule that we use is so important and just to point out a couple of things we purchased reinforcing mesh that needs to be uh, used in fabrication of these arch units. We didn't get it from the lowest cost mesh provider. We got it from the one that would get us there the most quickly. Um, we didn't go on a, we went on a dedicated load to get the mesh there. We set up not just one form, mobilized and set up one form to cast these. We did two, which was once again to meet the town schedule. And there are some other things that come along the way that um, our site tech arrived, drove on a Sunday on its own time to be there first thing Monday morning when we understood the set was to occur. And uh, the set uh, wasn't starting until Tuesday morning. So we certainly don't look for anything from that standpoint. Um, I know I was there helping out for four days on site, which was a benefit to Dubois Construction. Uh, rigging precast. So I guess I don't say any of these things for a pat on the back or acknowledgement, just to uh, convey the fact that contact understood that timeliness was important and we did everything that we could to put that in the best light that we could. So just want to provide some context. That's for sure. uh, yeah. I was going to say, when we put it out and we were getting our pricing, we, we knew, everybody knew was aware of our timeline. Oh, absolutely. I so appreciate absolutely. being able to do that. Yep. Um, I mean, obviously, obviously, we're going to, it's time and material and any construction job materials and things like that that are on site, you're going to have to pay for them. Um, my, I just really, for my knowledge and the board's knowledge and the town's knowledge, I just wanted to know, I basically really wanted to know if there was any one particular party that, that let us down or, or who, who, who was. I, and that i think that's that i think is part of the risk so <laughs> all, all things being equal um if the town's goal and the primary goal was not to have the road open with a primary with a finished solution that didn't require further work down the road um, we would not normally recommend this 
process in doing this. There is a lot of risk when a town has to purchase something and give it to somebody else to install it. Um, but Robert felt, and I agreed with him at the time, that the only way that your, your schedule was going to be met was to do that in this manner. Um, in doing so, the, the town has multiple contracts with multiple parties instead of one or possibly two contracts, one with a contractor and one with their consultant. So anytime you add more, more people into the mix, um, I guess I would say the, the error that was made was in trying to meet the schedule. It was not anything that was a omission of anything or anything that was done to cut corners or anything like that. It was just the process and how quickly it was moving um, and that the number of entities that were involved was part of the reason. We brought in a geotechnical engineer, which is actually the entity that caught the error they had to deal with Otter Creek and then context and then bring the boys into the conversation. So all of those conversations get ultimately a little bit more complicated. Um, I guess I would say that everybody shares a little bit in how that got to that point. Um, I guess what I would say in the long run is that the project, and it's, it's a hard way to think about it when you're talking about extra money, but if you look at when you open bids and with a project contingency, you do still have a project that is under the total project cost and has met your construction schedule in the middle of a pandemic. So I, I would say, you know, that it's the, yeah, it's not ideal, but it is, it is what it is to it, to a certain degree. Right. So you said all parties, new boys didn't have much to do with it going over. Do boys had, I would say do boys um, had something to do with the fact that they stepped up to the plate and didn't wait for all the paperwork to be in place before they proceeded for They understood that the town had a goal and a schedule and they took some risk on their end, not having all the paperwork in place before they proceeded. And then have an understanding is what I yep. heard. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, as our advisors, you would advise against rushing a process like that again? I've only recommended this one other time and it was in a similar situation where the schedule was the primary goal and everything else was dictated by that. Um, that's the only time that I would recommend this um, because of these sorts of, there's a lot more unknowns. Uh, the, more, the more people you add to a conversation, the more unknowns uh, come along with those conversations. Okay. Did reach the project goal as far as schedule goes, which is what everybody was working towards for this process. So, yep. you know, in, in context, certainly from our standpoint, we're certainly hopeful that this will be a positive experience, even though there's uh, it's a hiccup here that wasn't anticipated. This I was waiting for you to say it was all a free fall. It wouldn't be the first time I've gotten a finger pointed out. So it's a, it comes, it comes with the territory. All right. Perfect. Uh, anybody else have anything on that? I appreciate you guys coming. Uh, of course. So, yeah. are, you, are, you, are you saying that the, by Wednesday that'll be open? No. <laughs> no. Open. I can't speak to the contractor's schedule. Uh, I think the, the company line. Utility work was supposed to be done Wednesday. It's what I heard. Yeah. But, um, construction is construction, so when it gets done, it's when I know it gets done. Yes. So you would you expect next week? I this is uh, we're just precast yeah. arch designers and stuff. <laughs> say that we have any knowledge of construction schedule. Yeah. Right. I'm talking to I've talked to Potter Creek prior to this, and I'm also talking to uh, Mr. Lamberton as well as far as an uh, opening ceremony yeah. for that, basically. Uh, it looks like it's going to be probably sometime between the 15th and the 18th. Good so enough. Before Christmas. That's, that's the goal. And it looks like they're going to make it right now. Okay. And again, I hope by the end of this week, we'll have it you know, a little, little closer. So. Good. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you all. All right, next we have fire department raw survey data discussion. Um, I think it's important to note that uh, flow has the flow is now the fire department liaison. Um, she has a passion for it uh, and it fit into her schedule better. And I appreciate her doing that. I know she'll hopefully spend a lot of time with the fire department and helping. You want to start this conversation flow or do you want, want me to pick on Joe or what? 
No, I'll go ahead and start. And I appreciate that, Justin, for explaining because I wasn't sure that everyone realized that I was as the lady. Not a problem. I wanted to make sure that folks knew that it wasn't a conflict of interest. Can everyone hear me okay? Go ahead, yeah. Okay, very good. So at one point, I will shut off my um, video only because I'm going to be looking at a lot of documentation, but I'll turn it back on in a little while. I know I have about 25 minutes to speak. I'll probably speak about 10 and leave it open for questions as well as discussion from folks on the fire department. I have had a chance to meet with folks on the fire department and uh, weekly budget, et cetera, but also um, to go over the raw data and just what the, what the fire department is doing to make adjustments, improvements, succession planning and the future, quite honestly. So I'm gonna to touch on quite a bit of that tonight. I would just ask that all questions be held until I'm finished only because that allows me to concentrate and then we can touch on all questions at the end. And I do welcome the fire department to pitch in there because who knows it better than they do. Our data, which I assume all the board has had a chance to review. We received it quite some time ago and we did have some questions where we wanted more of an expansion on what folks had responded, how many people had responded. We knew at that time that there was less than 100. And I believe that I had commented in terms of, I would have really liked to see a wider spectrum of residents who responded. But for right now, what we have is what we have. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of what folks said, and we can all look at that. Uh, suffice it to say that there's room for improvement. The, the fire department realizes that and they've really taken great strides to get in that direction. And I commend them wholeheartedly. So I'm gonna shut off my view right now only because it's easier for me than looking at myself while I'm talking. Um, so basically in terms of the raw data, there were about 79 folks that responded roughly. Um, there's quite a few various sheets on that with which makes it a little difficult to print it out and share it with everyone. But the information's there for anyone who wants to review it that hasn't had a chance to. They broke it down into various categories and included visualizations. Included in that are all the responses that folks made. There were about 70 res residents that responded. Six of them were renters, 22 were landlords. There were eight business owners. Um, about 11 people were workers and four residents. Now, now, the best way I can explain the raw data is sort of what I touched on earlier that there was discussion around the call volume times, um, you know, response times, etc, and just room for improvement. The best way I can boil down what I'm seeing and, and uh, what can be done is I think there's more room for the town becoming involved with the volunteer fire department and I believe that the fire department is open to that as well. So I think that's a bigger, broader discussion that we can have as we move forward. Um, just wanna look at a couple things and then I'll expand a little bit more. The fire department in conjunction with the raw data, there was discussion about response times and and people going out. The fire department right now is looking at a way that they can actually have two people go out when there's a tone. Um, they're also looking at a weekend staffing. Um, they have a per diem process right now. And as an aside to that, they really would like to have two responders in the station, both on Saturday and Sunday. And those weekend hours would be used to perform maintenance tasks admin duties, various training, as well as responding to calls. They'd like to see the weekend staff paid per diem and paying weekend staff a per diem and not using the stipend would increase the actual stipend point value. So the fire department personnel can better explain the stipend point value, but that's what they've been following for quite some time. They'd like to have four hour shifts approximately 
Um, and some of what I'm discussing right now is down the road, I realize. Um, they are looking at a potential for a bunk-in program. They have Norwich University students right now that are coming on board, and that's very exciting as of last week. Last week, there were three, um, soon to be four. And um, can everybody still hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, very good. So another topic is the lowering of the response time. Um, they want to see quicker response to calls. And a lot of that would come with the weekend staffing and a bunk-in program. That's a step at reducing the response times. And I'm in favor of that as well. I, I'm a huge proponent of that. They're looking at planning for the future and looking to increase the capital replacement fund to be better prepared for the purchase of fire apparatus. And before I finish, um, I have other things I'm gonna discuss, but one thing I do wanna mention is that when I met with Joe Staub last week, both Joe and I were presented with an actual quote for equipment both for the corner station and the Riverton fire station. Um, it's a significant amount that is needed for the equipment, but at the same time, the equipment, the radios, and all of the apparatus that goes along with it, as well as the installation of antennas, uh, low loss cables, mass, entrance ports, et cetera. There's quite a bit that is necessary to really bring their equipment up and uh, the radios are hugely, hugely important. And that quote for the upcoming budget would be between 31,000, just a tad over 31,000 actually, um, to the range of 36,000, because it doesn't fully include all of the costs of the antenna mounts and the mass, et cetera, but it does include $7,500, which is everything surrounding the installation. So basically as an overview to everything I'm gonna to describe tonight, I just wanna emphasize that I'm really impressed with the fire department. I think Berlin as a town can be extremely impressed with what we have and how they work very diligently on a small budget. Um, the budget does need to increase. There's no doubts about it. Last year as a select board, we kept the budget down and we did real well there, but I think we need to be very open-minded going forward in terms of making sure that we um, spread as far as we can spread and help the fire department. And I would say that even if I wasn't the liaison, um, you had said earlier that I'm passionate about it. I am, I think we need to invest in our town. There's been so many things that we've looked at to help the fire department. And one of which is we've had many discussions about maybe bringing on paying of bills. Um, Joe and I did discuss that last week and that's not something that has to happen immediately by no means. They have a good process in place right now but it's something to just be aware of um, in terms of a future discussion. Okay, now I'm just flipping through some other information, so bear with me. Um, the last time the portable radios were in the budget, I believe it was through Burlington Communications and that was in the calendar year 2005. Also, if I'm getting it right and Joe correct me, Engine 3 has an old radio. Um, and I just need confirmation of which engine that is, whether that's a newer truck, but if I remember based on our discussion that um, that correlates with the reason as well why the radios are so necessary. It's just, you gotta get everything up to, up to speed there. Hello, is this a good time for me to chime in? Yes, go ahead and chime in, Joe. There's more information I'll share, but please do. Okay. That's great. I think just for clarification on the radios, when you're talking about back in 2005, that was that was the base radios. Oh, um, base radios. Okay, very good. And and so the quote of which you you just shared is um, for the replacement of the base radios. Um, and I did say when I was looking for quotes. Um, to include Riverton Station, which Riverton Station is not necessarily part of the EOC. 
shooting the stars on this. Okay, but the, the base radio um, at Four Corners Station is, and it is quite old and needing an upgrade. And then, where else? So, the, the portable radio, or the radio in engine three, engine three is the newest uh, frontline engine, and it does have, have a used radio in it. That is currently in this year's budget. Um, but I can also tell you that we have placed an order almost six months ago, and our radios will not be uh, in-house until probably March at best. So we will be placing another order um, fairly quick. Thank you, Joe. That was a good overview and I appreciate it because like I said, you had tremendous detail there. Um, I'm looking at some of the other note, notes that we wanted to address. And I do also thank you for all your time last week. And before I go forward, I also want to say that over the last few months, I've been very cognizant of the changes and additions and upgrades you made to the website. Um, I know you've brought on additional people on the fire department and uh, I commend that. I'm real excited about the Norwich cadets being there to assist. And I'm sure the folks in the town will be as well. So I know it's on the cusp in terms of you looking at a bunking program, but the best way I can describe that is the Berlin Volunteer Fire, Fire Department has had the Norwich Uni University students as well as some local members needing a place to stay during transition periods. And Joe can speak later to this, but it's a great idea to integrate the needs of the town and at the same time be responsive to um, what we can do to also assist those that are assisting us. And with the website, I wanna commend Ryan Barr because I think he did a fantastic job with the website and it's a, st a huge step in my mind um, you know, toward going forward. And although I can't speak to every single person tonight, I am very impressed with the fire department and we are very fortunate to have you all on board. Saying that, I want to acknowledge that I think you folks are very short staffed and that's why it's imperative to me that we need to take a closer look at everything to include how the town can assist you more. Um, and we can discuss this at a future uh, board meeting for sure, because I know it's a lot of information to bring forward. Um, you know, the raw data itself, I think that that's the crux of all these other topics. Um, you know, you basically put, put out the survey and you ask for responses, and then it's important to listen to what the responses were in context to how can we do better as a whole. And the world is changing. We've got COVID-19. We're going to be expanding as a town. We've got the town center. We're going to have more and higher expectations. And that's as much as I'm going to say right now. I want to allow time for everyone to say or ask questions. And then we can go further and answer additional or talk about anything else. And we can also talk about things at a future staff meeting as well, board meeting, I should say. Thank you. Keith, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, Flo did a good job giving a, a nice overview. Joe and Flo spent a lot of time in the last week, a couple of weeks uh, getting Flo up to speed with a lot of what we're planning on for the future. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things I'd like to, uh, add to is when she was talking about the base radios and and that the cost there is a portion of that is our intention is to increase the capability of the town's emergency management board when they have to operate EOCs in the town because they operate out of our station so it's kind of dual purpose there um, the the per DM Right now we pay 
a stipend annually. We don't have any per diem shifts running yet. This is something Joe and I are looking at and we're working on including in the next budget cycle. And we plan on, like Flo said, starting it on weekends, but that's a first step. Uh, our ultimate goal is to expand it to during the week so we can have better daytime coverage when we need it the most. And um, yeah, you know, right now we're, we're answering our calls. We don't have calls unanswered. Yes, they have some longer times. And as we found out when we did the study, it's the reason is traveling from our homes to the station. After that, once we get into the station, the times are pretty much in line with an, a normal department's response and getting to a, to a call. It's just the travel times because we're so spread out. Um, yeah, and I think I'll turn it over to Joe if he wants to add anything more. Thank you, Keith. Well, do you have anything, Joe, or are you good? Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, that, that, the bucket program is a fairly new topic um, that we've been talking about. Um, and we're, we're moving forward to, to uh, accommodate that as soon as we can. Like I said, um, we do have some Norwich cadets that, um, you know, for various reasons, aren't able to travel home, but they are required to leave campus, um, you know, at times. So this would be, uh, you know, a great place for them to, to come stay. Um, not necessarily, they're not getting paid to do so. In my mind, they're getting accommodations, but they would be required to do, you know, certain tasks and also to respond, which, you know, that's, they're wired for that. Seems like Truly. a good idea. Um, so, I, I, and I do see this getting expanded during the day. And, and Keith did say, or during the week, Keith did say that uh, no calls are, are going unanswered. And we're, we kind of really focus on the, the Monday through Friday. I will tell you, if you're looking at that data, your number of responders are less, but your response time <laughs> are, are less as well. So Correct. you're getting to the call quicker. And it's not necessarily because somebody is actually in station, but they're up and about and more readily available about <clears throat> that. And Keith touched on the EOC as well. A discussion last week about, you know, when our emergency director comes on board, you know, after folks have expressed interest you know, where that individual would, um, you know, work out of primarily. And I can see that right through the fire department. I think it'd be very beneficial for them as well. And um, I'm just looking at some other notes here and then I'll wrap it up and leave it open-ended for any uh, questions that folks have. And also for the fire department folks to chime in as well. I think the biggest thing that I can just broach tonight so that it can be on the table for future discussion is, um, you know, basically having us as a select board give consideration about merging the fire department with the town of Berlin. Uh, the fire department is open and receptive to that in many ways. Um, I don't have all of the data in terms of who's for it or, or, or may need more information. But I think it's a good time to be very open about that going forward. Um, and just to have it out there so that we can have the full discussion in terms of whether we bring this before the town residents this March. Um, and I think quite honestly, this is something we've been discussing for some time and then we're looking at the raw data, et cetera. And I just appreciate everyone taking the time tonight to be open-minded and uh, look at all of this together. Thank you. Thanks, Flo, for uh, diving in deep. I know sometimes we run short on time and I knew you'd do a thorough, thorough job with that. Thank so you. I, I appreciate it. Um, 
I think we're I think we're ready to start now to get a better understanding of the fire department and the building as a municipality. And I didn't know how you're operating, what your needs are as we're growing. That's the biggest piece. Um, as we whether it's in our zoning process or our just anything all the way around, you guys are a crucial role. Um, very much so. And they're very dedicated and responsive, and we're very fortunate. So I guess there's one last thing I'd like to share. Yep. Um, is I'm not ready to share the budget. You'll have the budget presented at your next select board meeting. Um, it has to go through the corporation to be approved first. But if you are looking to, um, we're looking to increase the capital replacement fund, and this is mainly we think of that as as fire apparatus, but it's it's more than that. It's also we put a new roof on the Riverton station just two years ago. Um, it's any large expenditure, right? Um, and we're we can't. What I would like to do is move forward with a weekend per diem shifts and that's going to cost something so we, we are looking at an increase to the budget for this i assume you were based on all the conversation we had okay <laughs> i think yeah are we really looking at having a question at town meeting regarding the fire department in the town? Potentially. We know that needs to happen in about a month's time, right? In order to do so. Well, I don't think it's anything that, Stefan, I, I don't know if it would be any official decision or whatever. I don't know where we're at. Honestly, I mean, we had talked about, talked about it, but I don't think there's any way the town would be ready to make that exact decision or the fire department in a month's time frame. Well, I was going to say, just to have it on a warning, if it's a public question being asked on the I think, board, it, I think it would be more of a, more of a, almost like a town-wide gathering data, right? Or where, what were you thinking? I don't know. If, if you want to, if you're ready. I personally was thinking, I know it, no, but I know it's a discussion that's been out there, and I think that the time is ripe. Uh, given the world we live in right now, the shortage of volunteers, the fact that the fire department is looking at all kinds of ways to be more responsive and productive, et cetera, and just quite honestly, stay afloat. Times are tough. And uh, I think we really should push this forward to the extent that we can. I do like your idea, Justin, about having a community meeting, um, but if we can get this on the um, ballot, well, I think well, that would be, would be on the ballot. It's, it's, unless I misunderstand what you're asking, it's a public question and therefore it would be on the floor. Yes, that's what I mean. Only, only funding you. questions go on the ballot. Correct. Yes, I do understand what you're saying, Corinne. Thank you. Okay. Well, I, I think we would have to I defer to you, Flo, with your enthusiasm on that one and Joe with the fire department to make it happen if that's what most parties want to have happen for this year. Well, you can just put it down as a non-binding question. Does anyone have any questions that they haven't had a chance to address? Brad, did you hear what Brad said? I did not. Just put it down on the, on the, uh, for the town meeting as a non-binding question. Very well. Thank you, Brad. an option and then uh, the fire department if they have they have a month or so or they got to march to get what they envisioned for it have their discussion at town meeting that's wonderful i think it's a wise move in my opinion and i think it will bring everything toward a healthy fire department, which overall benefits the entire town and all residents. Okay. Anything else? Thank you, Bob. Uh, Thank you. 
legal RFP decision. We were looking for some clarification, right, in the contract. Well, I could ask RFP. to call uh, on a hands far and <clears throat> see if I could get some additional details. Yep. Um, if you remember, one of the two of the uh, people that I references that I called with regards to them said they were busy. So apparently they're busy because I've called them a couple of times and they haven't got back been able to get back to me with the information yet. Um, Not a good sign. So if they're busy, <laughs> that's good, good for them. But um, my recommendation is to stay with uh, Zalinger Cameron and uh, Lambeck. Yep. Again, the response that I've had with the two individuals that I've been working with since um, so we're working with some paralegals fairly. Uh, so I'm working with a couple of their attorneys. Oh, they are? Yeah. Oh, they're doing some uh, other work too. Okay. And uh, they've been very responsive and very good. And they've been referring to the previous attorney from their firm that has, has retired as well for the background information, so it helps it mm -hmm. go a little bit better. So my recommendation is going to be to go to continue with them. How long was that commitment for? Well, we haven't drafted the letter yet because we didn't know where we were going. So I can put something together for whatever you feel, whatever the board feels is a reasonable contract. What was the old contract? I don't know, um, but I know that we've had these people since 19. 1989, I believe. I can't believe we haven't passed how long those rates were good for. I, I, I couldn't get my hands on on the old old contract, so I, I don't know what it was. I don't, I don't know if we had one. I don't ever remember seeing one. So. Can't really make a decision if we don't know how long the contracts were. Well, we don't have one anymore. Whatever it was, it has expired. But with this, with this piece, if you're making the recommendation to go with them, mm -hmm. and we can entertain a motion or something to do like a one year, two year, three year, four year, five year. But you got to have some sort of term in this contract, right? Here. Could you get a hold of uh, Kusik or one of them there and just see if they have a, a record of it? I, I can't, I haven't asked that question to them yet. Yeah. And then, uh, what is it? What does it matter what our old contract was? Or, oh, just for a timeline. But I would, I would almost think it must, the last time annually, unless, no, the last time the board did anything, I think it was, Thanks, Joe. it was, um, I want to say it was five years ago or better. I don't think you did. It almost have to be, if you had an um, a one year contract and then they increase their but, rates, we put it out there. Well, the only thing there is if you have a five year contract, you lock their rates in as long as they're good, which they have been. So, so we could entertain a motion that we would accept it as long as they were going to do that for a five year contract. Just be done with it if that was the case. I think you're going to have on the agenda for. I think you're going to have to uh, uh, see when the RFP went out, you didn't take in, uh, there was no mention of. Uh, it didn't specify a contract term in the RFP. So if, they're, if they expect it to be a five year contract, a three year contract, or a one year contract will change. Yep. Usually they, they do some sort of a step arrangement. That's what I mean, we do 100 year at the same rate. We got it. Yeah. So I guess you have to get it clarified. Yeah, clarify what the terms were. Okay. That was well, it's a valid it, point, Brad. What the board? If they were, if, they, if I could get well, a five year at these rates, yeah. If okay. if they were basing their this RFP on a, on a five year contract, well, more time. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I mean, like, look, I'll, I'll go I mean, look like what we do with some of our contracts with two with extensions. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. I'll, I'll negotiate with them for a five year at these rates, the option to negotiate anything in five years or extend. Yeah. If my hand gets back to you, ask them the same question. Okay. 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 Thank you, that. Ben. All right, uh, Colonel Parton had asked to be on the agenda, uh, but he's unable to attend. 
uh, it was a potential mask mandate enforcement uh, by municipality discussion. So he's asking to be scheduled for the next agenda. Uh, rec committee request for 5K budget and to spend $600 for ice rink goals. Do we typically, what do they typically have for a budget? 5,000? For what? Well, how much is that? No, they usually have like a thousand or twelve hundred dollars. Normally, what the town's been paying for is just the swim lessons. <clears throat> We've got Tim Shea, the chairman of the, of the board. Hey, Tim. Commission. Hello. So, thanks for joining. Yeah, so we uh, have upped our. Yes, we have upped our budget request. We're just getting started as a rec committee and looking to run more programs uh, than what's been done. Obviously, we're starting to take over from the Conservation Committee. And so looking to uh, have a $5,000 request, and that's uh, looking to do more youth and adult programs. So we would have some expenses to start these up, which would include uniforms, referee fees, field maintenance, and any equipment needed. Uh, we're also looking to update the signage on the uh, recreation facilities and um, any ice rink maintenance that we need to uh, keep that facility up and running uh, at a safe level. So um, the other thing we're looking to do is, is potentially do some subsidy for swim programs and ski programs for Berlin uh, youth as well. So. Um, not sure if we'll use the full extent as we're just getting going here in the last uh, several months, but looking to uh, have some money to be able to, to promote those programs. And then separately um, tonight, looking to ask to uh, release some funds to replace the basically non-existent hockey goals that uh, need to be replaced at the rink um, for, uh, for this upcoming season. So what rec? I just, just maybe a silly question, but Matt, we don't have the rec facilities over technically at Berlin Elementary School anymore. So, exactly. Well, they used to be the they used to the fields. It's all part of the supervisory, so we don't. I get you see what I'm saying. So I'm curious what rec facilities we have other than the hockey rink out here that would need referees or anything like that, potentially. What, what were your thoughts on that? I'm just curious because I think that Berlin does lack some, some youth sports and community involvement and things like that, that, that some of the other places do. Um, and I really think it's great that you guys are working towards that. I'm just curious what you're envisioning because I don't, I don't know what it is. Yeah, so we're envisioning someone emulating what the East Montpelier community has done. Um, the school, the elementary schools do have an athletic director, but we found that they're just uh, trying to manage five different communities. So we're looking to run the programs through the town, basically, uh, which is what East Montpelier does so that we can offer more programs and not be limited with what the uh, athletic director wants to offer for the communities. So, uh, so, so have, they you, keep... have you talked to the school board about using their facilities? We have talked to, we haven't talked to the school board. We have talked to the principal um, over there and have get, you know, they're certainly open to letting us use their facilities for the, some of the programs that we're looking, soccer, baseball. We want to also, when we can, when it's safe, do some uh, basketball and volleyball programs. Okay. Well, that would that would have to be obviously five thousand for next year's budget. Correct. And what do we have in the rec budget that's left that would? I mean, reserve. I'd have to go look at it, and I didn't think to do that. I want to wait just a minute. Uh, yeah, I think we're around two thousand um in the reserve as i recall so that's what we put it the committee got divorced from the yeah what's the budget in the uh conservation committee i don't know do they get alimony well i was thinking <laughs> that's what i'm thinking <laughs> what do you think 
I move my mail guns, money's in there. Well, I mean, I don't. I don't. I wonder, when do you need this funding if you were going to start this? I think it's great that we're going to do some sports, athletics. I, I, recreation. Oh, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. I, yeah, we, we wouldn't likely be looking to start uh, until spring of uh, 2022, just knowing that what we're looking at with uh, COVID and such for winter activities. I'm just thinking that's because that's still this 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 budget, um, and not our next budget too. So, correct. Um, the gold, Carla. Oh, you know, you know that. <laughs> Why are we getting ready to leave? Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> I haven't quite decided. Uh, oh, I guess. So the rec board does have a reserve of sixty five hundred from FY twenty one, and I don't know. What we spent in FY20. The rec board has 6,500 in reserve. Conservation. That's what we've this year. Recreation right. board, yeah. Conservation is different. So we have $6,500. They still have that as well. And FY21, I don't know okay. if we spent anything in FY22. Hey, Carol, Thank you, Diane. Yeah, I don't think at this point we haven't spent uh, we haven't spent too much. I know we've got some signage that we're developing um, and such, but as I said, we haven't really gotten off the ground with too many programs. So that, that'll help. Uh, that's some good starter money. I think well, you've got sixty five hundred in reserves right now. Yep. Um, okay. And so I think I think one of the things that the board would look at as well. Be our budget for our rec committee and our conservation committee, since that was previously a joint effort, maybe looking at looking at that when we go into our budget season. But do you think sixty five hundred in reserve, you would be able to accomplish what you're trying to to do until our next budget? Uh, yes, I think we that we could certainly. I don't think that would limit us too much, um, knowing that we can. Uh, carry that money over so that should be that should be good to uh carry us until the following fiscal year what's the conservation commission how much is let's see conservation Forty-nine thousand. the f into fy 21 <laughs> and that conservation that forty nine thousand. that doesn't include the uh, monies for the bike path right no okay. bike path is separate bike paths another thirty seven thousand. okay and that would now be the direct department, right? They're all separate. They're all separate. The, the bike all path can only be spent for... Yeah, yeah for bike path has to be separate. That's right, right. Because yeah, that was a dedicated, right? I want to hire a lobbyist for the Conservation Commission to work for the Planning Commission. <laughs> 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 the Conservation Commission get some money from like, having trees logged or something? They did. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. They did. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a reason for that money. <laughs> well, there was quite a bit in there before. Well, yeah. maybe we didn't get that much. Well, they don't spend it. I mean, they don't spend much. Well, do, yeah. but do they save? I mean, because they do. When they buy things, do they fundraise or do they use? They use that money. <laughs> or mass money. I mean, unless or... it's big. You know, for trying to conserve land or something, right? Yeah. Well, that's what the that's what the, the reserve right. is for. Okay. So, so I mean, I guess what they're looking for right now is a motion to approve the purchase of the ice, the the, rank, the goals for six hundred. Six hundred, and that that five k will be brought up in the budget five k conversation. Twenty three. Or not there. I, I I mean I didn't see him. No, I looked up there. I didn't see him. Hey, Joe, I can hear you. I'll mute it. Um, make the motion to approve the $500, uh, $600 for the ice, uh, ice rink goals. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. I know Dave's gone. So Thank you very much. Yeah, and thank you. Um, we thank you. Be good to be good to see that activity. All right. Uh, next up, budget review. Sorry, don't handle it any later than I thought. So, just kick this off real quick for the budget review. Vince is in control of it. So you've got a pretty extensive package for you that breaks it down. 
Um, Diane's summary is in there as well in regards to that. It's in the addendum. And there's three other addendums there that give you more detailed information. Um, for example, addendum one is the, as of November 23rd or 24th, the, what we spent to date for this fiscal year as a comparison to use. Um, and then there is the survey compensation as well as an addendum. So you can look at what the LCT survey has for salaries for compared for other towns that participated in the survey as well, or the same job titles that, that we have at the top of the list. The workbook itself is a is a bit of a detailed breakdown from Diane's numbers, basically, um, that we have and that we put together uh, for the budget that takes you through page by page, each one. So the first page is, as it says, um, wages and insurance and benefits compensations. And then it takes you through, the next several pages takes you through the revenue summary details and then expend, expend your summary and details following that. Um, so we, we decided to present you know, a full, complete budget proposal the first go around instead of, I understand in the past, it's been kind of done in bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so my, my recommendation is, you know, we maybe go through it at a, at a high level this evening um, and then, sorry, but homework for the board, this is kind of reverse, um, to look at it in detail. I'll put it on the next agenda again um, for further discussion, for questions, for comments, uh, as you see fit. Um, that's my recommendation. And I'll be quiet and I'll have a look and have uh, several questions. You want to go through the whole thing tonight? Or do you want to have a chance to look at the numbers? I don't know. Okay, either you know, way, I, I got water in my office. Conversation. I would, I would look at it and get you and get back to you. <laughs> so I can tell you, right, if you look at the, the, the first page, the, the wages, yep. it, it shows you uh, what they currently are for this year, 2022, uh, and then what the proposed at 2023 is, which represents a 2% increase. 2% for non-union and 3% for union. So that, again, total wage difference between last year and this year is 63.931. And part of that is an FY22, when we were doing the budget then, we did not have a new town administrator. We did not have a new police chief. So uh, it's not, so if you're looking at that, you're gonna say it was more than 2%. Uh, yes, from the budget, because we did not anticipate the changes. Correct. And obviously the rates were increased. If and you wanna see the details of the administrative wages, you go to page 10. The sheet in there that breaks it down. Tell you uh, what the town clerk was and proposed. Uh, the treasurer, right, right through all the uh, all the positions. Okay. Cool. That'll give you those details. The recommendation is that the board takes time to review this. There's a lot of information here yep. and a lot of detail. I, I just I think it would be best, you know, to look at most it most and put it on the next couple of board meetings, um, maybe to, to to talk through it in detail uh, and answer your questions because I'm sure there'll be several. Okay. Uh, one thing I did want to bring up, or a couple things I wanted to bring up, is the Vemers rate. They're anticipating that will go up right now. It's six point. Uh, two five, they're anticipating to go up to six point seven five. Okay, that's the anticipation. The board, uh, their boards have to vote on that every year. So I might not have the final answer, but that's kind of what I base my stuff on. And I did get um, from the leaks of cities and towns. I did get the new rates for workers' comp and our general insurance, and it went up by sixteen percent on our workers' comp. Yeah. Wow. Wonder why that? Why is it? are going down. Oh, we had losses. Yeah, we're that's right. We had a couple of workers' comp cases. Oh. I forgot the cases. Yeah, that significant. So, um, anyways, I think what I will do is send the board that detail as well. But that's all worked into that now. Yeah, the, the, the one thing that I'd like to point out as well on page 27 on the capital budget, I have done a good job this year paying off debt. As a result of that, 
we put we talked a little bit about putting into the capital budget, right? Uh, money for equipment like the trucks and things, so that we don't have to borrow money. That's in the budget this year proposal, but with the debt reduction that she's going to finish out this fiscal year, the capital budget actually went down by about thirty four thousand dollars. But all That's adding an additional three hundred thousand in there. For the for the additional future purchases, right? And so you'll see it in the line. Savings. Here. We're going to try to start the savings. That's what we're showing now. If that's approved, yeah. we would have that, and then we'd be reserving that money and then building on that, so that buying a new vehicle is not going to uh, be. You don't have to take out a loan. Right. It's time to buy every year. We, we, do. Do. we have the funds to buy the equipment. Well, we the greater off, right? That's paid. great. Thank you, Diane. It will be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, again, I just, just wanted to point out because that, that's pretty significant, really. For the, for the well, right direction for sure. yes. yeah. And the timing was right with that debt being paid off. So it doesn't, it's not a huge hit to the budget as we anticipated. And then were we looking for an ATV or something that's like that? There. Okay. That's, but that's does, but board, well. does the board know that? Uh, yeah, they were looking we'll for it. an emergency vehicle for things like Irish Hell or even trail maintenance or whatever. <laughs> to be shared with, all right, with the police. everybody in the town. Yeah, I, mean, I think I'm surprised we don't have one. Some Vince wanted to leave it at his house for some reason. <laughs> so, I'm using my own now and show people up and down, so. I still really don't have a take-home car, so. <laughs> that, would, that, that would probably send you through the roof, wouldn't it? Are there any additional positions put in there? One. There is. There is a position in there One as well. Full-time position. One full-time has been accounted yeah. for. In the and proposal. then if there was to be an additional person off of the utilities board, they're the ones that have to decide that. Okay. That would have to be part of their budget. I mean, we could force it on them and say, look, you need to do something. However, they're the ones that determine probably, that in their own budget. Probably that I need to look at that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, help them with that decision, probably. Yeah. But any other questions for Diane or I on the, on the budget at this point? No. What you want to look at? No, I think we'll go. I'll go through that. We'll go through that. Um, and then maybe we'll have a discussion on the, the other options for the uh, you know, potential staffing additions as well. Yeah. Can we include that in our next budget discussion? Sure. Maybe do a little bit of research and see what that would look like. Well, I've been like. keeping track of my time. I have this is the last week of that four week cycle. Yep. And then Vince will have all of that. Vince will have all that yeah. data for us. Excellent. Yeah. It's just about that. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think that's we're getting somewhere. And if anybody has questions, you can email me as well. I'm happy to try to answer that. Thank you. Um, okay. Approval of license permits, vouchers, and applications. Let me read that. Sure. Okay. Okay. Payroll warrant 22 10 for payroll from November 7th, 2021 to November 20th, 2021, paid on November 24th, 2021, in the amount of 47,175.33. Payroll warrant 22 11 for payroll from November 21st, 2021 to December 4th, 2021, paid on December 8th, 2021, in the amount of 58,914.21. Payable warrant 22G10 with checks 21595 to 21641 in the amount of $554,065.23. November 2021 reconciled bank statements for the general fund and sewer water division. Payable warrant 22 9 check held from the 1115 meeting to contact energy engineering, check number 25, uh, 21575 for 203,936. So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, approval of minutes from November 15th, 2021. I make the motion to approve the minutes of the November 15th, 2021 meeting. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, round table, I just 
want to give Carl a quick second. He's not going to talk like he. Carl, are you there? He's muted. I am here. Yes. Hi, Justin. Hey, so we, we missed you on the agenda, but I wanted to give you a quick minute um, and round table to just say what you want to be on the agenda for, and then you'll be on it for the next meeting. Okay. Now I apologize for, uh, for missing my cue on the agenda, but uh, I guess what I wanted, uh, the agenda item says mask mandate. That's actually not specifically what I was wanting to talk about. Um, I'm more interested in uh, something uh, a little a little bigger than that uh, from my perspective. Uh, so I, I wrote a potential ballot item and I wanted to get the select board's uh, thoughts and even guidance on how to get an item like uh, I'm about to read to you on the ballot. Um, I'll just read it to you and then I'll, and then I'll, so, I'll, I'll so, explain what my justification on. is. Carl, hold on a minute. We have the utmost authority on it here saying that it can, the ballot items are, are financial items. The other ones, any item like that, and I apologize if I, I didn't give you that information. Um, a, an item like you're about to read would actually be a floor discussion. Okay. Okay. Well, so uh, I'll read it anyway, and then you can let me, give me your guidance and ideas. Uh, um, Here's the text. Shall the town of Berlin, in an effort to prevent and eliminate discrimination based on medical status and individual medical choices, prohibit and prevent mandatory medical procedures or use of any form of medical status document, digital passport, or other form of medical identifier as a condition of employment, entry into public or commercial spaces or participation in public events or groups by any business, company, corporation, governmental, or educational entity within the town of Berlin, regardless of county, state, or federal mandates, requirements, dictates, or policy recommendations from this day forward. So that's the, the text of what I guess I would like to be either a floor discussion or a referendum or, or an, an item on uh, the town meeting. So, okay, Corinne wants to make a comment. We're not gonna... Carl, that's so long and complicated. Even I'm not clear what exactly you're asking. Okay, so if you, had the text, if you had the text in front of you, it might be more clear. But what I'm basically saying is, to, to synopsize it is that uh, um, we won't have a vaccine passport in the town of Berlin. And okay. uh, the town of Berlin as an entity uh, will not uh, support or allow it. Uh, and the people of Berlin, and, I, and I'm looking at New York City right now, who is actually going into private entities and they are pushing a, va a vaccine mandate right now and a vaccine passport. And, and uh, I, I gotta say straight out, this is not to protest or be against the vaccine. Uh, Specifically, what it is about is a medical identifier, a card, um, or a biometric chip or tattoo or, or anything that uh, can basically relegate individual liberty to a conditional privilege. And that's, that's something uh, I think is, is uh, very dangerous to a free republic. And it's, uh, I know this is probably a mile high look at what's going on, but it's happening in other countries right now. It's happening in some of the larger cities that have uh, um, government leadership that is more likely to impose its will on its citizens. So- uh, Hey, Carl. Yes. We're gonna give you some time at our next meeting. as well as give you a quick intro there. Thank you. So I would, I would love to. They're good. Maybe, I, uh, maybe simplify a little too, so we understand it better. Because I can see that, and if maybe if you have something that we have that you give out or whatever, because um, there is some confusion on your the intent there. Um, but we look forward to having you at our next meeting for sure. Okay. Pretty what sure. is that? So I can pencil it in, Justin. Twenty first. Twentieth. Or twentieth. Yeah. Twentieth. Okay, and I bet Corinne's there now too. Um, but what is in the meantime? I mean, we, he only has two weeks. 
if he does want to get what can we advise him on the process of putting something getting something on the floor um i believe it's kind of similar to getting it on the ballot as far as um if it can be by select board right. approval or by petition. petition petition and then how many signatures would he need if it was by petition 100 yeah actually i think it's a little over 100 right now yeah, do you, you get that, Carl? Yeah, I'd love the specific number and uh, any advice you can give me on specifically what I need and when I need it by would be great. If you give Rosemary a call in the morning, she can tell you that right off. Although, remember, it's a moving target. So you know, if we get a lot more people registered, registered to vote in the next month, the number would go up. So you'll want some extras when you go to do that. Okay. Uh, Vince, Vince also said he'll make sure you get some info. Okay. Now that he's got the right email address, it's not kicking back. Thanks. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, anybody have any else for a round table? Or Can I ask a question? Nothing to do with what he's talking about. Did anything end up happening as far as getting an EMD? It's on the next, on the next agenda. agenda. Next agenda. Yep. Yeah, we need to I got two, get two quick things. Sorry. No, it's okay. I'm sorry. So, do a great job. Received a, um, a, uh, an email from a gentleman by the name of Clark Amadon. And he is uh, a fishing enthusiast and also he, he's not a resident. But he pointed out to us that and sent some photos that are, it's in your package as well with regards to the Berry City pump station down on 302, potentially leaking some raw sewage into the river. Um, there was concern over the, the quantity and, and how this happened, how long it's been going on and things. Um, long story short, I called the Barry City Manager, had a, a long uh, discussion with him about that. He was well aware of it. Uh, Mr. Armadon had also talked to them as well and, and some others in the Public Works Department and things. They did have a pump failure down there. Uh, they did replace that pump with a larger pump. And they are in the process of going out to RFP to actually um, rebuild uh, that pump station down there on 302. So it's his basic position was there's really it was from his perspective it was a minor uh, indirect discharge with minimal impact. Is that pump station in Berlin? Or is it in Barry? Uh, they don't have lines in Berlin. I, I think it's over the line, but the flow comes into Berlin. And that was his concern, right? Because he was fishing on the Berlin side with that flow coming in, apparently. We don't really have much jurisdiction over the state's all in the Anyway, the, the, the letter's in there with a little more detail about, about what he wrote, but I did I did talk um, to the Barry city manager, and, and he was well aware, and they took action. Uh, the state had been involved. They responded in time their due diligence um, okay. but but again if you hear anything or anybody says any anything about it you're that was important that you be aware thank you uh, the last thing i have is is a question i had a gentleman contact the office that is interested in purchasing town property that, that orders his land up off from um uh, is it the Bel belt nap road there's 18 we have a 17.5, 18-acre parcel up there that borders his property at the end of Belknap Road that he would be interested in purchasing from the town if they're interested in selling it. Can you make an offer? He has not. Uh, he first wanted to know if the board was no even interested, anybody. and then well, we uh, from there. Almost have to go through the conservation thing. They, they're the ones that manage it, right? but we don't really usually... Not unless it was to pick up another track or something. I can't imagine. Really. I would have him, you know, have I'll, him I'll reach out to the conservation commission. I'll speak to the conservation committee yeah. as well and ask them their position yeah. on the. Anything else? Anything else? No, that was it. Those are my only two. I made a motion to. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're there. Entertain a motion for contract. Uh, move to uh, during the select board, move into the executive session. Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 
or an executive session. <laughs> <laughs>